community of data scientists.net, helping data scientists collaborate, share experiences and knowledge so that we can serve to inspire others in managing, analyzing and visualizing data. And this video today coming from uh, the centre of Brisbane, Australia, in this uh, great boardroom provided to us by uh, Process Performance. So it's a little bit more formal than uh, my previous videos and um, I'm happy to be here. So this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the data scientist's way of problem solving. Now, if you're in the data science space, it's very likely that you've got problems. There's no uh, doubt about that. So if you're a computer scientist or um, well, you happen to be a data scientist or um, perhaps you're an informatician or a domain research expert or any other um, avenues that the, the data scientist um, role evolves from, very, very likely that you get to see a bit more of an overview and picture um, or a larger picture of how the data sits in your organisation or in your group. And um, that is where you can come forth and see a lot more or a number of problems that perhaps other people may not see. So in essence, there's two types of problems that uh, exist in the world. And the first one is problems that uh, you find or problems that are mine. And the second type is problems that are others people's and they want to give them to you to solve. So what the key is, or the way, the secret and the, um, the trick to a data scientist's way of problem solving is to convert all your problems into other people's problems. Now, it, I need to say this, and, and what we want to do is do this ethically and honestly, but we, there is a way we can do that because essentially those problems are going to get back, given back to us um, to, to solve anyway. So, I can't stress that enough. This uh, model is um, not to be used lightly. It needs to be done honestly and ethically. And um, I'll be going through a model on how you can go about um, getting your problem solved and, uh, and creating real or more value for uh, those who you are serving. Here's a model how you can ethically and honestly convert your problems into other people's problems. And that other person is uh, written as a, uh, the sponsor. So the person that's typically providing probably the money or, the, or who you want to impress and provide value for. So it all starts with the problem and I've got the problem A. And the first question you ask is, did I discover it? Now, if the answer is yes, uh, you go on. You can go on this extra tangent of uh, of, of workflow, but if it's no, uh, we can go with the typical sense of okay, presenting three solutions. Uh, does the sponsor agree with one? If yes, implement. If no, go find another three solutions. Yeah. get your problem solved. Now, that's traditional. Someone else is giving you a problem and you go and solve it for them. Now, let's talk about if you discover it. And um, as I mentioned, being a data scientist, there's going to be a lot of more insight in the, in the data and in the workings that you're more um, likely to see issues and problems that uh, you're going to be able to discover that the sponsor didn't even know about. But this is where it comes into um, joining it in with their value and what they want to get out of um, why they're doing the project or study. So we go down this path. Yes, I discovered this. 
what we want to do is use uh, a mechanism to find out what their problems are. And uh, one mechanism we can use is what's called a satisfaction wheel. And you may have seen them, it's just a, 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 a wheel with split up into eight sections and into eight sections you draw out the main uh, area that perhaps they might um, in, be incorporating in the workflow or the, their life or and you can really put in those eight areas anything you like and you give that to the sponsor and um, they give you back a score on how they're satisfied in a, a group of eight areas what you do is pick up the lowest scoring satisfaction area and you convert their problem into problem A. Problem A I equals problem A, the original problem, plus the delta of problem A, the change in problem A. Still the same problem, but you've done a change to write it as a problem that you discovered. Now this is quite easy to do when we're talking about data and um, everything's being so integrated, so uh, linked. It, it's very almost difficult to say that one way or another a problem, someone else's problem, isn't linked to an initial problem or a problem that you've discovered. So this is the beauty of um, using this method because you can honestly come up with reasons how they have a, are having a problem that you know how to fix, but it's just getting that language together, getting that communication on the same level that rewords um, the, the problem that you've discovered into something that they are understand and they're keen on solving and they're um, inspired for you to actually go out and solve that for them. So we now have the problem AI, um, you need to actually ask if they want it fixed because in some cases um, perhaps it's not really, it really isn't important and, um, in some, and when that is the case you really got to ask yourself another question. So if the sponsor wants it fixed, um, so this is yes. No. The next question is, is it still a problem? Is it a problem for you? Now, you most likely thought it was a problem because you're doing a job for this sponsor and you wanted to um, make things more efficient. But if you go down this process and you say, do you want it fixed? They say no. Is it still a problem? It can most likely, the answer be no here. And you've got problem solved. If it is still a problem, you come up this tree. You change the way you modify the problem and give them another satisfaction uh, areas or wheel or look at the, uh, an existing uh, low scoring on the one you get first gave them and come down this tree. You can go through this loop if, if you think it's worthwhile and you can really see that um, this needs to happen, this problem needs to be solved, keep going until you find the match that the sponsor wants um, in order to get this problem solved. But if, when you get to the point, if you go through this cycle a few times, it's very likely that you probably want to come out in this way and say, no, it's not really a problem, problem solved. So that's the model in how you can get your problem solved and you can um, it essentially give them back to someone who uh, can give it more momentum, more backing, more force on actually getting it solved and that's what you need and um, well, it makes it a lot easier if you have that behind you and it's quite straightforward in some cases to, to make the problems you discover linking to uh, something that the sponsor really isn't aware in these terms of what the problem means but when you put it in terms that they understand and they, they've actually initiated 
then it all becomes clear and it becomes uh, a lot easier to solve these problems. So now I'm going to talk about a little bit about why this fits in so well with the data scientist model and what data science is. Because data science really is about uh, data science is about managing data. It's about um, analyzing data, and it's about visualizing data or creating a visualization of that data. They're the core aspects of, of um, what a data scientist does. And how does that fit in with this? Well, we can see that when we look at this, what we have here is just data. So this could be considered as data to be managed. What are we doing over here? we're doing here and all the way down to here is converting it to a visualization. So we convert it into a representation that they understand, take it all the way to the solution and the problem solved. So this is this is the core essence of what the data scientist does. Manage the data, analyze the data, visualize the data, and deliver. So I need to stress again, what you want to use this for is ethically and honestly as you can, and you don't want to be going up with some uh, hairbrain schemes or, or some unrelated issues that um, just to get a new computer that um, you can solve the sponsor's issue with bad tasting coffee in the morning. Perhaps, I don't know, maybe there is a linkage there somewhere, but um, if, if you don't have a clearly defined and, and set and, and identifiable of um, how this problem um, can, can end up solving everyone's issue, then don't even try it. What's well, so coming up and coming um, next week and this Wednesday, if you're interested in learning more about the full cycle of data science and what it, the other components it involves, um, I'm presenting a webinar that um, will be coming out on Wednesday. Um, it'll be done at 7 p.m. Australian time, um, Eastern Australian time. If you're interested in coming and sitting along in that free one hour webinar, put your name and email address into the box below or just contact me through, through the site um, and uh, let me know that you, you want to sit in on that free webinar. We'll be covering things like what a data scientist does and uh, as well as how about a data scientist goes about doing what a data scientist does, we'll be talking about um, communication getting people involved, being able to collaborate most effectively. And we'll also be talking about the value aspect, ensuring that that value is there. So the webinar is called Data Science in a Nutshell, and it'll be screening and um, live streaming this coming Wednesday, 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. If you're interested, put your name and I'll look forward to talking to you perhaps on the uh, webinar 